ओम साई राम दिस इज साई सचरित्र चैप्टर फोर्टी एट दिस चैप्टर कवर्स द स्टोरीज ऑफ मिस्टर शिवाडे एंड द सपत नेकर्स एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ दिस चैप्टर समवन आस्ट हेमत पंत वेदर साई बाबा वॉज अ गुरु और अ सत गुरु इन ऑर्डर टू आंसर द क्वेश्चन हेमत पंत डिस्क्राइब द साइंस और मार्क्स ऑफ अ सत गुरु द साइंस ऑफ अ सत गुरु अ पर्सन हु टीचर्स अस द वेदा एंड वेदांता और द सिक्स शास्त्रास और सिस्टम्स कंट्रोल्स हिज ब्रेथ और brands his body with mudras that is metallic marks of vishnu's weapons gives pleasing discourses regarding brahma gives mantras or sacred syllables to his disciples and orders them to chant the same a certain number of times and explains beautifully the ultimate principle but as himself got no experience or self realization is not a sadguru but he who through his discourse creates in us distaste for the enjoyments of this world and and the next gives us a taste of self realization and is well versed in both theoretical and practical knowledge of self realization deserves to be called a sadguru how can he who is himself devoid of self realization help his devotees attain it a sadguru does not even in his dreams expect any service or profit from his disciples on the contrary he wishes to serve them he does not think that he is great and the disciples small not only does he love them as his children but regards them as equal to himself or brahma the main characteristic of a sadguru is that he is the abode of peace he is never restless or ruffled and has no pride of his learning the poor and the rich the small and the great are all the same to him hemat pant thinks that on account of the accumulation of merits in his past births he had the good fortune of meeting and being blessed by such a sadguru sai baba even in his youth, baba hoarded nothing except perhaps chillim he had no family friends home or any support since he was 18 his control over his mind was perfect and extraordinary earlier in his life he lived fearlessly in a secluded place and always abided in his self seeing the pure attachment of his devotees he always acted in their interests and hence he was in a way dependent on them experiences similar to the ones he gave his devotees while he was alive are even today after his maha samadhi experienced by those who attach themselves to him what the devotees have to do is trim their hearts lamp of faith and burn it in wicks of love and when this is done the flame of knowledge or self realization will be lit and will shine brighter mere knowledge without love is dry nobody wants such knowledge without love there is no contentment and thus we should have unbroken and unbounded love how can we praise love everything is insignificant before it without love our reading hearing and study are of no avail in the wake of love follow devotion dispassion peace and liberation with all their treasures we do not love anything unless we feel earnestly about it so where there is real yearning and feeling god manifests himself now let us revert to the main story of this chapter if a man goes to a true saint with a pure mind or even fraudulently and holds his feet ultimately he is sure to be saved this is illustrated by the following stories Mr Shivade Mr Sapatnekar from Akalkot was studying law Mr Shivade and a few other classmates met him and they all compared notes of their study it was found through discussion about the subjects in the exam that Mr Shivade was the least prepared for the examination and therefore all the students derided him but he said that though he was not prepared he was sure to pass the examination as Sai Baba was there to get him through it successfully Mr Sapatnekar was surprised at this remark he took Mr Shivade aside and asked him who the Sai Baba was whom Shivade extolled so highly Shivade replied there lives in a masjid in Shirdi a fakir he is a great soul there may be other saints but he is truly unique unless there is a great store of merits on one's account one can't see him i fully believe in him and what he says will never be untrue he has assured me that i will definitely 
class this year and I am confident that I will get through the final examination with his grace. Mr. Sapatnekar laughed at his classmate's confidence and jeered at him and Baba. The Sapatnekars, Mr. Sapatnekar passed his examination, settled at Akal Court and practiced as a pleader there. Ten years after this, in 1913, his only son succumbed to a throat disease. This broke his heart. He sought relief by a pilgrimage to Pandarpur, Gangapur and other holy places. However, this did not restore his peace of mind. Then he read the Vedanta, which also did not help him. In the meanwhile, he remembered Mr. Shivade's remarks and his faith in Baba, and he thought that he too should go to Shirdi and see Baba. He went to Shirdi with his younger brother, Pandit Rao, and was very pleased to see Baba from a distance. When he went near Baba and prostrated himself and placed a coconut before Baba with sincere devotion, the latter at once cried out, Go away! Sapatnekar hung his head, backed away and sat in a corner. He wanted to consult somebody who would advise him on how to proceed. Somebody mentioned Bala Shimpi's name and Sapatnekar met him and sought his help. They bought Baba's photos and came with them to the masjid. Bala Shimpi gave Baba a photo and asked him whose photo it was. Baba said that this photo was his friend's, pointing to Sapatnekar. Saying this, Baba laughed and everyone else joined him. Bala asked Baba the significance of the laugh and beckoned Sapatnekar to come forward and receive darshan. When Sapatnekar began to prostrate himself, Baba again cried, Get out! Sapatnekar did not know what to do. Then they both put their hands together and sat before Baba, praying. Baba finally ordered Sapatnekar to leave immediately. Shimpi and Sapatnekar were both sad and dejected. As Baba's orders had to be obeyed, Sapatnekar left Shirdi with a heavy heart, praying that he would be allowed to receive darshan next time. A year passed and Sapatnekar's mind was not at peace. He went to Gangapur where he felt even more restless. Then he went to Madegaon to rest and finally decided to go to Kashi. Two days before he was to leave for Kashi, his wife had a vision. In her dreams, she was walking with a pitcher to a well. There, a fakir with a piece of cloth around his head who was sitting at the foot of the neem tree came close to her and said, My dear, why get exhausted for nothing? Nothing. I shall get your pitcher filled with pure water. She was afraid of the fakir and ran back with the empty pitcher. The fakir followed her. At this point, she was awakened. She described her vision to her husband. They thought that this was an auspicious sign and they both left for Shirdi. When they reached the masjid, Baba wasn't there as he had gone to the lendi. When he returned, she was very surprised to see that the fakir she saw in her vision looked exactly like Baba. She reverently prostrated herself before Baba and sat looking at him. Seeing her humility, Baba was very pleased and began to tell a story in his peculiar fashion to a third party. My arms, abdomen and waist have been paining for such a long time. I took many medicines and yet the pain did not abate. I got sick of the medicines as they gave me no relief. But I am surprised to see that all the pains have now disappeared at once. Though no name was mentioned, it was the story of Mrs. Sapatnekar herself. Her pains, as described by Baba, left her soon and she was happy. Then Mr. Sapatnekar went ahead to receive darshan. He was again welcomed with the former get out. This time though, he was more penitent and persevering. He realized that Baba's displeasure was due to his past deeds and resolved to make amends for the same. He was determined to see Baba alone and asked to be forgiven for his past actions. He placed his head on Baba's feet and Baba placed his hand on it and Sapatnekar sat stroking Baba's leg. Then a shepherdess came and sat massaging Baba's waist. Baba, in his characteristic way, began to tell the story of a bunya or businessman. He related the various vicissitudes of his life, including the death of his only son. Sapatnekar was very surprised to see that the story which Baba related was his own and he wondered how Baba knew every detail of it. He 
realized that Baba was truly omniscient and knew everything about everyone's lives. When this thought crossed his mind, Baba, still addressing the shepherdess and pointing to Sapatneka, said, This fellow blames me and charges me with killing his son. Do I kill people's children? Why does this fellow come to the masjid and cry? Now I will bring that very child back into his wife's womb again. With these words, he placed his blessing hand on Sapatneka's head and comforted him saying, These feet are old and holy, you are carefree now. Place your entire faith in me and you will soon reach your objective. Sapatneka was greatly moved and he bathed Baba's feet with his tears and then returned to his residence. Then he made preparations for worship and naivedya and came with his wife to the masjid. He offered this to Baba and accepted prasad from him. There was a crowd in the masjid and Sapatnekar went there and bowed before Baba repeatedly. Seeing heads clashing, Baba said to Sapatnekar, Why do you prostrate yourself repeatedly? One namaskar offered with love and humility is enough. Then Sapatnekar witnessed the Chavadi procession described before. In that procession, Baba looked like a veritable Pandurang or Vithal. When leaving the next day, Sapatnekar thought that he would first pay one rupee as Dakshina and if Baba asked again, he would again pay one more, reserving with him a sufficient amount as expenses for the journey back. When he went to the masjid and offered one rupee, Baba asked for another as per Sapatnekar's intentions and when it was paid, Baba blessed him saying, Take this coconut, put it in the upper fold of your wife's sari and leave without the least anxiety. He did so and within a year a son was born to him and with an infant of eight months the couple came to Shirdi, placed him at Baba's feet and prayed thus, O Sainat, we do not know how to redeem your obligations, therefore we prostrate ourselves before you. Bless us poor and helpless people and let your holy feet be our soul refuge. Many thoughts and ideas trouble us when awake and asleep, so turn our minds away from them to your bhajan and bless us. The son was named Murlidhar. Two others, Bhaskar and Dinakar, were born afterwards. The Sapatnekar pair thus realized that Baba's words were never untrue or unfulfilled. Bow to Sri Sai, peace be to all. And this brings us to the end of Sai Satcharitra chapter 48